Hello friends. Welcome to Brooks Permissions Feedback Friday. I'm Darius Colquitt, tech face or social media manager for Brooks Permissions. Today I'll be reading you one of my favorite pieces by Gwendolyn Brooks, a story poem entitled The Life of Lincoln West. While I read it though, here are some questions for you to ponder. When have you ever felt inadequate or like you didn't fit in, be it in looks, personality, abilities, or lack thereof? How did you overcome that feeling? Well, without much further ado, the life of Lincoln West. Ugliest little boy that everyone ever saw. Uh, that is what everyone said. Even to his mother, it was apparent. When the Blue Apron nurse came into the northeast end of the maternity ward bearing his squeals and plump bottom looped up in a scant receiving blanket, bending to pass the bundle carefully into the waiting mother hands, that this was no cute little ugliness, no sly baby waywardness that was going to inch away as would baby fat, baby curl, and baby spot rash. The pendulous lip, the branching ears, the eyes so wide and wild, the vague, vibrant brown of the skin, and, most disturbing, the great head. These components of that look bespoke the sure fiber, the deep grain. His father could not bear the sight of him. His mother high-piled her pretty dyed hair and put him among her hairpins and sweethearts, dance slippers, torn paper roses. He was not less than these. He was not more. As the little Lincoln grew uglily upward and out, he began to understand that something was wrong. His little ways of trying to please his father, the bringing of matches, the jumping aside at warning sounds of oh so large and rushing stride, the smile that gave and gave and gave, unsuccessful. Even Christmases and Easter's were spoiled. He would be sitting at the family feasting table, really delighting in the displays of mashed potatoes and the rich golden fat crust of the ham, or the festive fowl, when he would look up and find somebody feeling indignant about him. What a pity, what a pity. No love for one so loving. The little Lincoln loved everybody. Ants, the changing caterpillar, his much-missing mother, his kindergarten teacher. His kindergarten teacher, whose concern for him was composed of one part sympathy and two parts repulsion. The others ran up with their little drawings. He ran up with his. She tried to be as pleasant with him as with others, but it was difficult, for she was all pretty, all daintiness, all tiny vanilla, with blue eyes and fluffy sun hair. One afternoon, she saw him in the hall, looking bleak against the wall. It was strange because the bell had long since rung and no other child was in sight. Pity flooded her. She buttoned her gloves and suggested cheerfully that she walk him home. She started out bravely, holding him by the hand, but she had not walked far before she regretted it. The little monkey. Must everyone look? And clutching her hand like that, literally pinching it. At seven, the little Lincoln loved the brother and sister who moved next door. Handsome, well-dressed, charitable, often to him. They enjoyed him because he was resourceful, made up games, told stories. But when their more acceptable friends came, they turned their handsome backs on him. He hated himself for his feeling of well-being when with them despite everything. 
He spent much time looking at himself in mirrors. What could be done? But there was no shrinking his head. There was no binding his ears. Don't touch me! cried the little fairy-like being in the playground. Her name was Nerissa. The many children were playing tag, but when he caught her, she recoiled, jerked free, and ran. It was like all the rainbow that ever was, going off forever. All. All the sparklings in the sunset west. One day, when he was yet seven, a thing happened. In the downtown movies with his mother, a white man in the seat beside him whispered loudly to a companion and pointed at the little link. There! That's the kind I've been wanting to show you. One of the best examples of the species. Not like those diluted Negroes you see so much of on the streets these days, but the real thing. Black, ugly, and odd. You can see the savagery, the blunt blankness. That is the real thing. His mother, her hair had never looked so red around the dark brown velvet of her face, jumped up, shrieked, Go to! She did not finish. She yanked to his feet the little Lincoln, who was sitting there, staring in fascination at his assessor, at the author of his new idea. All the way home, <laughs> he was happy. Of course, he had not liked the word ugly, but after all, should he not be used to that by now? What had struck him, among words and meanings he could little understand, was the phrase, the real thing. He didn't know quite why, but he liked that. He liked that very much. When he was hurt, too much stared at. Too much left alone. He thought about that. He told himself, After all, I'm the real thing. <laughs> it comforted him. If you enjoyed this poem, you can find it and so many more in the most recent Brooks Permissions publication, Seasons, a Gwendolyn Brooks experience. On sale now at GwendolynBrooks.net forward slash shop. Here again are today's points to ponder. You can post your answer directly to our blog or contact us on any of our social media. Facebook.com forward slash Brooks Permissions, on Instagram at Brooks Permissions, or on Twitter at Brooks Permit. See you next week with another Feedback Friday. Love and peace.